3,500 people. We actually had a good random sample poll, 10%. 98% of the people there in Minneapolis at the Media Reform Conference agreed with the statement there's a truth emergency in the United States. So there's a truth emergency in that 9 million votes in the 2004 election were different in the exit polls than what the final results said. That, and it was only in 13 states, where 37 states where the, the exit polls matched. That's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. We have not had a valid election. Um, certainly in 2000, the election was stolen. Bush has never been elected president of the United States. Yeah. 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 That kind of conversation simply doesn't occur in corporate media. They, they, they just can't talk about it. They can't address questions of depleted uranium and the impacts it's having on the world, both in Serbia and Afghanistan and Iraq, the equivalent of 10,000 Nagasaki bombs now of radioactivity released in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. They can't talk about the, the foreknowledge that an attack was coming on 9-11 and the death of every nation, literally every nation in Europe, telling us that an attack was pending, they're going to hijack airplanes, and in fact, the World Trade Center were the target. We knew all of that. So we have criminal culpability here at, at the highest levels. And, you know, we're, maybe we'll change the title of our book to, you know, indict the former president at some point, but it's certainly there. So there's an incredible list of, of stories not to worry, missing, not to be sent. $20 billion the first year of the Iraq war, and nine of it's missing. We just sent cash, trade, you know, carloads of cash, and $9 billion is missing. <laughs> we had 300 Iraq veterans testify on Pacifica Radio and Free Speech Television last spring about atrocities that were going on there. And it gets a back page coverage in the metro section of the New York Times. That's it. So we have a severe truth emergency in the United States, something that needs to be addressed, something that's, that City Sheehan and other people up here will speak to, and it's a really important issue, and we just can't let it go. Thank you. We have this one hour, five days a week, where we get to report on what's not being covered. Um, and we get phone calls from all over the world all day long from people saying, this story is important, this story is important, and every story is important, especially when the, uh, the corporate establishment media um, fails to cover them. So I just want to say thank you for, for Peter's work. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that, that word, we hear a lot of you know, people talking about mainstream, the mainstream media, um, and, and a friend of mine reminded me that actually we should be talking about it, it is the establishment media, because we're the mainstream. We're the people, the majority in this country, I believe, across the place, who understand that stories like these are not being covered. And we're, we're being told a, a fraction of the truth. Um, sometimes, most of the time, probably not even the truth at all, because it is the five corporations who own the, the television and the radio and the newspapers and the magazines. Um, that are intentionally biased towards serving the interests of the corporations. Um, so we have to reframe our language when we talk about um, what, what we want uh, as, as a media. We want to be uncorporate. We, we want, as Dennis said, to hold the centers of power accountable. Um, we need a press that is serving the people and not the corporations. Um, and like Cindy said, we need so to be able I'm just saying that after this election, we all have to prepare ourselves. Because the empire of the eagle has crashed. The whole world knows that. But because they control media, we can't see it. We still believe in the American dream. We're still hoping that this government is going to save this country. Obama, whether it's Obama or John Wayne, the pain, excuse me, the pain, it's not the answer. They're all military, you know, presidential cabinets. And we have to not only stop the war, we have to stop the ROTCs going into our high schools and going into junior colleges and recruiting from the military. This government and the federal communists have already, have already taxed the future of our youth for the next 30, 40 years. Most of us will be dead. We're not going to be paid off this debt. It's going to be our children. And I'll tell you something. People would say, what is the bailout going to do to your community? I said, well, my community is supposed to be poor. You know, we've been poor all along. We know how to scratch. We know how to grow corn, squash, papas, frijoles. We will survive. We've been poor all along. Most of us don't own homes. We don't have credit, credit lines. We're invisible. Yet we're a vast majority. We 
I know what hunger is. I know what farm workers. I grew up as a farm worker. I lived in the chicken coop until I was 12 years old in Sonoma County, one of the richest counties in this country, and still is. And every night during grape season, 12, 1, 2 in the morning, they have giant stadium lights. And they have farm workers out there picking the exquisite wine grapes. So that the fancy class in this country that drink their wine at 30, 40, 50, 60 bottles, excuse me, dollars a bottle, and can't even pay a decent wage to the workers. I'm just going to turn this thing very simply the borders are instruments of dominant groups, of powerful economic groups, of capital, if not labor. They are functional to the system as mechanisms of transnational control. You know what? In Indian land, there are no borders. Yes. Borders are brought to separate. And I'll tell you something, you all, if this was anywhere else on earth, there would be riots in the street for what just yeah. happened to the bailouts. Mm. Yeah. Did you believe it? We should be outraged. How can we, we as hard-working taxpayers who barely make livings, be paying the bailout of the rich corporations that got themselves in the mess? Yeah. That's right. why. Yeah. That's why when we get real candidates like Sydney, we yeah. need to support them. Yeah. The fresh, fresh air. Because honesty and truth are a dangerous language and morals in this country. Thank you.